everybody. Welcome to the Spiritual Connection Show. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm the spiritual head of the Transformation Center CT located in Westport, Connecticut. I'm also an energy healer, shamanic practitioner, and a transformation coach. So I'm going to put up a slide of the center so you can see how you can reach us. Okay. So my spiritual name is Mataji. So that's um, our URL, transformationcenterct.com. And that is the email address and phone number. So at the center, you know, we do a variety of things. Um, we have workshops and classes. Um, every month we have different events, both in person and online. So you can check those out on the website. They're always updated there. And we also have individual sessions, you know, so I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for clients as well as um, any kind of healing that you need, um, usually a shamanic healing. And then you can learn all about that. And, you know, just contact us for, for information or you can have a free consultation over the phone. Um, we do have a new class that's been going on for a couple of months and it's called Spiritual Connection and Evolution. So that class is all about you and, you know, having you discover um, what, what you want in your life and, and helping you to get there. Um, this month, the topic is vulnerability, but every month there's a different topic. And we meet the second Saturday afternoon of each month. So again, all that information is on our website. So today, you know, the Spiritual Connection Show is all about connection, right? One of my core values, you know, I love to meet new people and find out what they're about. And, and then they can share that with you and you can learn for yourself, you know, connect um, and find out about your spiritual journey and, and, you know, what's there for you. So we're happy you're here joining us today. And I'm very excited um, to introduce my guest, Sue Griggs O'Shea. Welcome to the show, Sue. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to this. Um, you know, I, I just met Sue recently um, she's a realtor and she's the managing director of the Remax Right Choice, which is a group of, of um, realty offices. And she lives in Milford. So that's where we met through our, our networking group um, called TLC, which is a group of holistic um, health practitioners. So Sue in Milford, as I said, she's been married to T for 31 years. Wow, that's great. Thank and they you. They're named Erin. Um, so Sue, you know, she's going to tell us about this, but what, what I want to say now is that she's really on a mission to inspire healthy living around the world. And you'll find out a little bit about, about how she does that in a few minutes. I'm going to put up her slide and you can see how you can contact her and give you a little clue in advance about what she's going to talk about. Um, so you can reach her there. That's her, her phone number, her email address. And then also her website for Juice Plus, which you're going to hear about. Um, yeah, so as a health and wellness advocate, Sue is passionate about educating and helping others learn the power of whole food nutrition and how to grow your own food without soil through her Juice Plus franchise. I love that little photo over there. That's so cute. I want a little tree that you're growing. <laughs> yeah, it's my tower garden. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, welcome to the show, Sue. It's great to see you. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, as you know, I really like to start my first question. I ask the same question to everybody, all my guests, which is, you know, tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey, how you got to where you are, anything you want to share. Sure, thank you. Um, I, I put some thought into that, um, what spirituality really meant. And, you know, it kind of, it's an interesting thought uh, for me anyways. I think my spiritual journey started when our daughter was born 27 years ago. Um, you know, the first thing we wanted to do was certainly have her baptized. And uh, being um, my husband, an Irish Catholic, wanted to have her baptized in the Catholic Church, which we did. Um, but as time went on, um, I was born and raised in the Protestant Church um, at Mary Taylor Methodist Church in Milford. Um, I, I felt my home was calling me back to, to bring Aaron to, to be there. Um, the Catholic church just wasn't, um, it wasn't for, for me at that time. And so we started her in Sunday school and through church and the, the praise maker choir. And um, I, I grew up going to church, but not 
I wouldn't call my family religious. My dad, maybe my mom, not so much. Um, but certainly we all believed there, believed in something. And um, if nothing else, community that, that we had from there. And it was um, the journey with raising a child in, in a church to teach her values and to, to believe in something. Um, it was really the, the moment was um, during a mission trip when Erin was in her teens, a um, program called UM Army is United Methodist Action Mission Reach Out by Youth. And I went along as a chaperone and it was one of the most um, eye-opening life experience, life-changing experience that I got to go through, especially as a mom with Erin, but personally as a leader, um, on a team with five teenagers. And when we first received the t-shirts that we were all gonna wear for that trip, um, the t-shirt the said servant on it. And I was taken back when I first saw the word servant. And I didn't really understand at that moment what it meant. I didn't feel that I was a servant. I didn't wanna be a servant, I didn't think. Um, and it was, we went through the week and. Um, I think it was the following year that Erin was on the same trip. Um, she did it for four or five summers that um, I learned more about what the word meant. And Erin's last trip, she helped build a handicapped ramp in um, um, Tom's River, New Jersey for a woman named Connie. And oh, I'll get choked up. I can't get through the story ever. Um, Connie hadn't been out of her house for five years until these teenagers came and helped build a handicap ramp for a way to get her out of her house. Erin actually wrote her college essay on it. She, she will tell you it was a life-changing experience for her and our family and, and everyone that, that week. So I learned as time went on what servant really meant, that, that I felt um, I had become a servant leader I have a servant heart. I enjoy doing good for others. I like taking care of people. I like helping people. Um, I like serving, the word serving on, you know, going back to the PTA. We used to joke about, um, you know, okay, here's the word no. No, I can't, can't be on that committee because you're on every committee. So really the journey has been over the past 27 years. Um, that, that has really come along by having Erin in our lives. So, yeah. so blessed to have her. Yeah. That's a wonderful um, way to, to learn about yourself through, through that mechanism, you know, through your daughter and then seeing things, you know, open up and, and really shift for you, you know, going from yeah. a servant to, of course, I'm a servant. I want to be, you know, I'm serving exactly. humanity. I'm serving God. I'm serving right. All yeah. of that, yep, yep. And it really expanded within the church to, um, you know, a group of women, United Methodist women. Um, I became a part of it. Um, I was, um, I had an opportunity, the job I was working at, I had Tuesdays off and that's when they met and I went and I was by far the youngest person, woman there. Um, most, most of the women were 60s, 70s, 80s. And I said, I feel I need to be here because they were the ones that served the coffee and, and did the receptions at funerals. And I said, who's going to do this when they all pass? We need to, we need this legacy. We need this tradition to, to go forward. Um, and, and after time, I became, you know, the president of UMW and, and so on. And it, it was just something that I feel myself kind of, um, I don't know if calling is the right word, but you know, an attraction to it. You were drawn to it. Drawn to it, yes, very much. Yeah. 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 And you clearly yeah. got, got a lot out of it, as did the people, you know, that you were, that you were helping. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's what I love about spirituality is that it's it's different for everybody. You know, there, of course there's some commonality, you know, among groups, but you know, I I talk to so many people and Everybody is a little bit different as to how they came to their spirituality, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's super. No, I had a similar experience growing up with the Catholic um, faith and, you know, with my 
my mother and um yeah just sometimes things work for one person and they don't for another and, and that's fine yeah absolutely yeah you know because to me it's it's pretty much all the same <laughs> underneath you know yeah a surface level there's there's differences but underneath it's all about um you know who we are and i and i feel that we have god in our hearts you know that god is, is part of us and so it just it's just manifested differently yeah. yeah i think even having a sense of community um you know being part of being part of um you know more than just yourself you know that we all need we all need each other especially yes. in, in times of, of tough times no yeah, but no. in good times to celebrate in good times so it shouldn't just be all in the bad times but in the good times as well right i mean humans were social animals and so you know that's that's why i'm so i guess um connection is so important to me because I feel that's 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 how we're meant to be, and and it's it's a it's a very um, instinctual kind of um, thing for me, you know, to connect with with someone else. I would agree, and I think it's been hard in in our world that we want to connect, but we're fearful for connecting. Are we vulnerable that we don't want to be rejected? You know, even in and I. I try to teach my daughter lessons that you, they don't teach you in school, right? There's so many life lessons. Um, you know, when you're at an airport or on an airplane and everyone's, you know, to themselves, but everyone's feeling probably the same anxiety. So just a smile or a hello or an introduction, you know, hi, I'm Sue. All of a sudden that icebreaker just, everybody's feeling anxious. So how do you break through that? And just through a smile, or an introduction can go so far. Yeah, no, that means a lot. You know, and I, I mentioned a little while ago, we're going to be talking about vulnerability. So it's interesting that you should mention that because what I've discovered is that if, if we are vulnerable, like if I'm vulnerable with you, then it's almost guaranteed that, that I'm going to get something back, you know, because it, it opens up a channel. Um, but somebody has to do it first. You know, you're right. absolutely right. So if you're the one to give that smile or that hello, I'm Sue thing, then then it, it, it can shift a whole. You know. And it takes bravery, right? You know, it, it's 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 not easy because what if you get that rejection? Right, right. And that's that's why people that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. Is <laughs> like that's what people, you know, are afraid of. But everybody has the same um, fear. You know? So it's really, it is about being brave, you know, because there's some myth that being vulnerable is about being weak, but you know, okay. yeah. exactly the opposite. So, but it, it the other thing, good. yeah, the other thing that I, I have the privilege of working alongside a, a great um, person, Jeff Wright, the owner of Remax, but he says often that we have a kindness drought in the world right now, that we need more kindness. Um, and I think everyone really strives to be, but we get, again, caught up in our own. But if we can take a step back and just, you know, look at the other person's situation and, you know, if you can lend out a hand or, um, you know, try to help someone, try, you know, we're, we're all trying to do the best we can really in life, I think. Yeah, I think that is exactly what I believe. We're all doing the best we can. That's exactly yeah. it. So it's easier when you have that view to have compassion for the other person. And like, you know, the saying, once you have compassion, then that leads to the kindness. I love that. Yeah. 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 So how long have Good you been, um, been a realtor? You said you've been in Milford 31 years. How long have you been? I have. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I actually sold industrial products. I worked for a large company um, for, oh gosh, 12, uh, 12 years. And when Aaron was in younger in, in um, can, you know, first grade, um, decided to make a career change to be closer to home. And so I've been licensed, it'll be 20, 20 years next year that I have my real estate license. Um, went on hiatus for a couple of years when Aaron went off to college, uh, left the business and came back. But um, yeah, it's, it's been an amazing um, journey for me. And um, eight years ago today, actually, I was introduced to um, a, a wellness product. And my girlfriend, Gerilyn, who 
um, research is everything. At that time, I felt um, my life was a little bit in a health crisis. My mom had passed away from cancer. And um, at the time, our daughter was sick. She had had mono and was going through a lot of um, issues as a result of um, you know, some medication that she took. And my husband was taking many medications. And I, I just kind of felt that we were you know, spinning out of control. And she introduced me to an alternative uh, or a different way to eat healthy, which I didn't grow up eating um, really healthy. My mom cooked more out of necessity than, you know, it, it was out of boxes and cans and it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't from the garden. You know, that's not how we grew up. And I have learned so much in the past eight years that um, so much of our, our health issues in, in our world today can be prevented if we ate more plants, bottom line. Um, and so uh, this company, Juice Plus, has, has done that for us, an easy way to take fruits and vegetables and basically put it in a capsule so you can get your whole food nutrition um, easily. Um, and it really has, it has changed my focus. Um, I believe that it just is educating people on making one simple change. I know it has, you know, for me, it's been a dramatic change in our family's health and really has, has changed my purpose. I, I want to, you know, shout from the rooftops that not, we don't have to be sick. We, we don't have to have all the illnesses. There's an, there's an easier way to be healthy. Yeah, no, that's terrific, right? Because if you start with, with the good food, the fresh um, vegetables and fruit, then it's, it's like a preventative from getting sick and getting ill. Yeah, so, so you started that and, and it, it worked so well for you that then you decided to be part of the company. How did that work? I, yeah, um, so I, I literally signed up um, that day to get the product and to, to get it at a better cost, I signed up as a rep. Not because I needed anything on my, more on my plate between PTA and church and um, my husband's from time to time says, maybe you have a little bit too much on your plate. Um, so I didn't sign up for another job. I had a great job. You know, I, I wasn't looking for that. But it was over time um, that um, my aunt actually had passed away from cancer. And I saw a lot more sickness. And I learned a lot more from doctors and from research studies that I felt a moral and, obli a moral and ethical obligation that I needed to share what I learned and not keep it to myself. What if I could help someone feel better? And so over time, and um, I do it, you know, through, I call stolen moments. Um, it, it's, you know, nights, weekends and stolen moments that I can share just through conversation with people. You know, it seems that everyone has some type of, um, everybody wants to be healthy, right? I, I want to grow old gracefully. I want to be as healthy as I can for, for my daughter and hopefully grandchildren. And unfortunately, in, in our country, that's not the case. You know, we're, we're a very sick country. And it's not so much health care, um, it's sick care. So if I, want, I want people to, to be healthy, health care. Let's talk about how we can improve our health. health and not necessarily fuel our sickness. Right, not, not get sick in the first place, which is, I know, don't get me started on that because it's, it's, it's yeah. So if, if everybody can do a little bit in that regard, then we can start to shift the whole dynamic. You know, I right. think right. the, first, the first step is the educational piece, you know, that you learned about and, and sharing. And so are people um, pretty open to it? How have you, how have you found that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. People want, you know, they're striving for something, you know, more information, learning. Um, and it, it's really about just conversations and, and making, you know, I say one simple change. I was, I was intrigued when I first started taking Juice Plus. Um, there's something called metabolic programming. I never knew what that meant. Um, but what you put into your body, your body then creates more of. And I was in the fruit, 
fruit aisle buying fruits that I wasn't familiar with, you know, investigating new things and um, putting apples into our diets and, you know, simple things. And an apple a day. I recently did a, um, an article for our church newsletter. Um, we have a health and wellness committee at church. And I, I, did, I did an article on an apple a day. And in some of my research, you know, where did that problem, where did that saying come from? And it's an English proverb from 150 years ago. So 150 years ago in the 1800s, 1866, we knew that an apple a day, every day would keep the doctor away. It would keep you from getting sick, right? We need to put what's called phytonutrients into our body um, to fight off the oxidative stress and all the bad stuff that we encounter every day, you know, the toxins, the pollution and all the bad stuff. So I, I just learned that it, it's not, it doesn't have to be that hard, but it's little steps. And all of a sudden the little steps lead to bigger things. Mm -hmm. So um, the apple a day keeps the doctor away every day, yeah. eat an apple. Yeah. 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 I never knew where that came from either, but of course it's something we've all heard growing up and, you know, it, it, yeah, I, I love apples. <laughs> we, we eat a lot of them, my husband especially. So the juice plus there, it's basically a capsule that has the nutrients in it. it Correct. Yep. Oh, and I, I, that. Yep. I, I don't have my sample. Well, here, I, I can put the slide, up. I'll put the slide back up that has sure. the little photo sure. that at least. So basically. The fruits and vegetables and berries are picked at the height of ripeness, uh -huh. which is when the nutrients, um, so the capsules and their soft chews. When the nutrients are most um, effective is at the height of the ripeness. And so at, in, in grocery stores, right, we have to pick the fruit two weeks ahead of time to get on a truck to get to their final destination. So they lose some of that nutrient dense nutrition. So what Juice Plus has figured out how to do is pick it at the height of ripeness. They, um, they pulverize it, not juice it, but pulverize it. So the vitamin C in the orange peel, well, who eats an orange peel? So they pulverize the entire fruit vegetable and then they dry it. Um, and into a powder and the powders put into a capsule and it's um, vegan, non-GMO, um, no herbicides, pesticides. It's as clean as clean can be. And so we take the capsules and they have soft chews for children that can't swallow or for older adults. Um, and it has just become a way of life. I mean, my husband is just beyond an Irishman that grew up on meat and potatoes who his whole diet has changed. And he's gotten some really great, great uh, recent test results as a result of eating cap these capsules every day. And it's just, you couldn't, they say you should have seven to 13 servings of fruit and vegetables a day. Well, a serving is your fist, right? Like who can do that? So even if you can do that, it's still, you know, probably we're eating the same, the same few things, you know, you probably have three or four veggies that you eat as a family, you know, broccoli, carrots, and green beans. You're not eating the rainbow of the color. And that's what the great thing is that you get 30 different fruits, vegetables, and berries. And it's the synergy and your body knows what to do when it all goes into your body. Um, I've recently, not uh, recently shown off, but um, what you saw in the picture was my tower garden. That's one of my most exciting things. Um, this is my fifth season growing it. So we got the tower garden uh, actually as a gift for my brother and it didn't work out in his house. So we brought it back to our house and I do not have a green thumb at all. And it is an aeroponic garden. So it's a, it's got a 30 gallon reservoir that feeds the water up through the tower and then sprinkles the, the water and the air and the nutrients over the roots. And the plants grow, um, there you go, yep. So that one actually, that's not my basement, but right now mine's in my basement and you can grow 30 different, um, you can grow anything that's not a root vegetable. So I've grown eggplant, tomatoes, this is outside, squash, pumpkins, melons. Inside, we grow lettuce, we grow all of our salad. We eat a salad every day for lunch and, and for dinner. 
So you can grow with the lights, the lights are on um, for 14 hours a day and the water is on a pump, so it runs itself. So it is really one of the simplest and it's so fun. I call my, I get the seedlings, my babies and I plant new, new seeds and how are my babies doing? And when I walk by it to do my laundry, I pick the lettuce off the tower and just eat it. And it's really been a lot of fun. We've really experimented. Never ate bok choy in my life, never ate Swiss chard. So have really, you know, expanded what we eat in our house as a result of growing our own food. That's awesome. I love that. Really cool. Yeah. I've heard of that before. That's awesome. So, so you do the supplements with the, with the juice plus, but then you've changed your, the rest of your diet as well. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Because the metabolic programming and, and certainly we're far from perfect. I mean, we, you know, we like chocolate and then, you know, treats um, like we all do, but this is the insurance policy, right? That I know I can have, I, I don't have to eat perfectly every day. I'm not going to eat perfectly every day. This is my insurance policies that says my insides, I'm, you know, I'm taking good care. And that's what it is. It's the cost. It's the cost of a cup of Starbucks coffee. We brew our own coffee at home and we, we take our juice plus, you know, it's a, it's an affordable way to, to put the nutrition into our bodies. You know, it sounds like it would be especially uh, valuable for areas where they don't have the fresh fruit and, and vegetables so much, you know, like what we call food deserts and some of the urban areas, inner cities. I don't know, have they, has yep. Juice Plus um, worked in that area at all? Sure have, sure have. There's a gentleman named Stephen Ritz and he's actually taken the Tower Garden. He's an educator, school teacher in the Bronx. And he has taken the, the tower garden and changed the school system and, and really um, what the Bronx looks like. He has um, brought the towers into the schools as teaching and the, the children went and it's, it's been studied that when a child grows something themselves, they're more likely to eat it when they take part in, the, in helping grow it. And he's actually traveling around the world. He has, he, he has brought the Tower Garden to the White House um, a few years ago and really check him out. It's Stephen Ritz, the Green Bronx Machine. He's done an amazing job uh, changing the lives of many, many, many children as a result of this. But for, you know, urban farming, putting these on the rooftops and like you said, into the, the concrete or the um, what did you call it? The des the, oh, the they call it a food desert where there's food no desert. Yes, yes, available yes. fresh food. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's awesome. I love that that he's doing that. That's that's really that's that's great. I have to look into that. Yeah. Yes. Well, this has really been it's fun talking to you about all of this. I learned so much today. God, I'm glad. I love sharing. I love, like you said, inspiring healthy living around the world. If we can help a couple people. Um, there are many people, you know, get a little bit healthier and you feel so much better. You know, you want to get up every day and, and, you know, go for a walk, do some exercises. Yeah. Every, that's important. Yeah. Recently uh, saw the video, of the, the blue zones. Are you familiar with the blue zones? Mm -hmm. Check it out. It's a really interesting, it's the people where people live the longest and the blue zones are um, what, what they do is that they, they move, they eat naturally, they're part of a community, they have purpose, they love. Um, there was a gentleman, um, I just saw this last night on, a, on a, a, um, a video, that he was diagnosed with lung cancer at 62. He lived in Westchester, New York, and he moved back to Greece, where he was from, and he said, I'm going to go to Greece to live out the end of my life, and he lived another 35 years, because Greece is one of the blue zones. Healthy place. Oh, Healthy yeah. place. Yeah. Well, if you're, any, if you're any testament to it, then everything you're doing is working because you look so vibrant and healthy and dynamic. Thank you, Katie. And, Thank you, Katie. Yeah, we're going to wrap up now, but, um, you know, we'll be in touch and look for Sue on the Spiritual Connection Show and in her community. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care. Thank you.